Next up, I want to talk about Git Reset and Git Revert. Basically, talking about how do you get out of trouble. If you've made a mistake, if you've accidentally added something, committed something to a repo, and you want to undo that mistake, or even worse, if you've, un you've made a mistake and you want to undo that mistake, but you've already pushed it up to a remote location, and now it's available for other people as well, and you have to find a way of undoing that change and undoing it for everybody. So this is how we do that. I have here a repo that I created just for this. Uh, this repo, all it has inside of it is a readme file. So I'm going to download this. This is a common thing that you'll run into. I've got a project folder. I've been working on this. I've done my NPM work. I've set up a bunch of things, uh, but I haven't turned it into a Git project yet. And I want to merge it with that one online. So we'll say git init to turn it into a Git project. And then we have to link it up with the one online. So we'll git remote add, and then I will we have to say what it is. So git remote add, and we're going to call it origin. And then this is the name that I've got online. There we go, origin. There we are. Now I've set this up so that the one online is connected to this. But because there's a file online, I can't push this one up yet. What I need to do is I need to bring down the readme file to have that inside of here. And then I'll start adding my files after I've done that. So once they're both in sync, then I can start adding the things on my end. So locally. So we'll say git pull remote origin, or not remote origin, origin master. We want to pull down the origin one. We want the master branch. And we have to spell it correctly. There we go. All right, so I've got my readme file. And that is right now the initial commit. If I were to do git log, here we have, we've got the initial commit. And then, oh yes, I, I had a typo in my readme file and I did that as well. So there's two commits that have been done on GitHub so far. Nothing that I've done locally, but two that were done on GitHub. But now I have a record of those changes. Oh, also getting in and out of this, um, Vim will be launched in here. You'll have a, a text editor that appears when you use many of these commands to especially git log. To get out of here, you'll see down here there's a, a little colon. If I type colon Q, or if the colon's already there, I can just hit Q. I'm quitting, I'm exiting that. So uh, you'll see me do that quite a bit through here. Okay, now I've got four untracked files. I'm going to add those into my repo. So we'll say just git add everything and git commit with our message um, added app.js package and JSON files. There we go. So we've added those four things. We've committed them. Now we can push that online. So we'll say git push origin master. We're uploading everything so that both online and my local copy of the repo, they're completely in sync now. If I jump back to the web browser and I refresh this, sure enough, there we are. We've got all the files. There's my commit messages for these four. There's the commit message for that one that was there before. Okay, we're good. We've got the repo set up. Now, dealing with mistakes, getting into the reset and revert. If we look at git log one more time, inside of here, you can see these hashes right here, these big long values. Those are unique identifiers for each commit that you do. And I scroll down here. The initial one had one value, and then there's a different one and another one. So we've got three commits. So there's three unique identifiers. Sometimes if you know that um, you might be jumping to back to a certain state, you doing a lot of resets and reverts and things like that, uh, you can actually give a tag named these things so that you can identify them a little bit easier. We could say uh, git tag start. So by doing that, when I look in git log now, I can see this tag start. And I can use this instead of copying and pasting this big long string like here. So that's something that you can keep in the back of your mind. OK, now errors. Let's say that I'm adding a couple of variables in here. 
one and two. So these things, I've been added those, I've saved it. Um, then I've done an add and we've done a commit. All right, there we go. Now I've made this change. I've committed to the repo. So it isn't in my log. If I do git log, I'm going to see that there is a brand new entry there. Sure enough, there it is. Okay, back here. We could add a tag to this one. You don't have to use all caps for them. I do that because it's easier to remember and easier to identify and quickly spot them when looking at the log. But I've got this name now associated with adding these two lines of code. But I realize, oh crap, no, okay, that was going to be something that I was going to add as part of another feature. I need to undo this change that I've done. This is what the git reset is about. So if I say git reset, I can do this. I can say head with one caret, and this will step back the head one place. Alternatively, I can say this with a tilde and a one. That also will go back one spot in the log. So it's like I'm undoing that change. I'm moving the commit, the sort of, uh, if you think of it as a, a tape recorder and you've got the head at a certain spot, I'm moving it back to a previous location. Fair enough. Let's run that. There we go. I've undone the commit. So in the commit, no longer are these two lines of code. But they're still here. They're still in my working copy of the file. It's just the fact that in the log, in the main git file, we've got those initial three. But the one that where we said added one and two, or just one and two, that doesn't exist anymore. We've rolled back. We've we've said we don't want to have that committed as part of our repo anymore. So now this is saying, okay, yeah, your working copy of the file has been modified. There's changes in here, these two things. So I can go on and maybe I wanted to add something more. Maybe that was a change that I meant to include, or maybe I didn't want to have this code at all. If that is the case, if I want to roll my code back in the working copy to something from before, now this is pretty easy to edit. I can just delete those three lines. But if it's something more complex, maybe there's 40 or 50 lines of code and it's spread across a couple of files, and I want to roll that back to where it is in the repo, so where the head is in the commit. Back in here, if we go back into the git log, this is where we rolled the head back to. We did git reset to come back to here, but I don't have the code there I've got my working copy of the code, but I want to get the code from here. So I can either use this value or I can use that tag that I had, start. Either one will quit here and I can do this. I can do git checkout and then either the tag or that thing, space, dash, dash, and then the name of the file that I want to revert back. And there we go those lines of code are now gone. This file is now back to the exact same state it was in at that moment in time when I did that. So great, my working copy is done. I no longer have a modified file. My head inside of the git repo, it's saying this is where you are. My working copy is the same as that. The one online is the same as that. We can do a git status. And yep, nothing to commit, working tree clean, we're all good, there's no changes needed. And if I try to do a git push origin master, there should be nothing that needs to be done. Having trouble spelling that word today. There we go, everything is up to date. So yeah, that one change that I made and committed, I've now used git reset to roll it back. And I've done git checkout to change my working file back to match that as well and then I've tested it by doing a git push, everything's matched. Now, what if I had actually made that change, pushed it online and needed to fix it? So let's go back to our code here. One, two, and let's add three as well. There we go. We'll do an add and we'll do a commit with the message one, two, three. 
Okay, there it is. We can add a tag if we want. Let's just call this one three. And now I'm going to do the git push. Okay, so I made a change. I added it. I committed it. And now I've pushed it online. So up here online, if we come in and we look inside this file, there's the message right there, the commit message. And if we go in and take a look at that file, sure enough, there's the code. But I realize after I've done this, after I've pushed it up online, hey, this isn't the code that I wanted. This isn't supposed to be shared with everyone. I didn't mean to do this. How do I get back? If I do a git reset now, so I do a git reset, and we're going to take the head and we're just going to move it back one. Fair enough. We do that. Now my problem, I can also do the checkout to roll this code back. But now I'm out of sync with the server. It no longer matches. So we can do the git log to see what we've got. So I'm back to this. Online, they're one commit ahead of me. So I can copy that, come out of here, git checkout, update my code, back to this. It's like, okay, for me, in here, everything looks fine. I've rolled back, but online, they've got a different file. If I try to push now, there's going to be a problem because I no longer have that final commit. If I do the git push now, it's going to complain. It's like, you can't do that. You cannot have a different history and then try to push something on there. And this is where git revert comes in. So to fix my code, I'm going to have to do a git pull. There we go. I've downloaded. The code is now back in sync with what was online. All right, fine, but I know that this problem exists. I need to fix this problem. I need to roll back, but I need to do it in a way that I can then update the server as well. So in git log, let's look at this again. There's that one, two, three is back now. What I want to do is I want to undo this. So I'm going to copy that, or I could use three either way. I'm going to tell git I want to undo this thing, but I can't just roll back. I can't move the head from here to here because that puts me out of sync with the server. I need to do it in a way where I'm going to take this version and I'm going to make this sort of a new commit after this one. So we're undoing this change. There will be a new entry that says we're reverting this change. So let's say git revert. And this is my one, two, three. There we go. And here's the commit message for saying it. Yep, revert one, two, three, or you can say undo one, two, three. This is the text editor that I was talking about. Inside of here, if I hit I, I'm now in editing mode. So instead of revert, I can say I'm undoing this change. Okay, great, that's done. I can hit escape and now colon, Q, exclamation mark, so quit and write. Boom. There we go. So I've done my update. I've changed this. Oh, sorry. Colon W is for write. Colon Q for quit. Um, so I've, I've made this change anyway. If I look at git log now, now there's a new entry here. We have the 123 that we got from the server and revert 123. So we've undone that change. And you can see right here, the one, two, three, it's gone. So we've sort of rolled back. It's like we're doing a reset, but we're undoing that last commit here. But because we've done it in a way where we're moving forward, we're adding something new. Now I can do a git push origin master. There we go. That's now sending it up to the server. And if we look here and we refresh this page, now it's happy. It's got back to the original state. There was the, the revert that I did. And in the commits, we can see that there were the two that we did on the server. 
than one that we did. Then we push that up and then the variable one, two, three, and then we rolled that back. We undid it. We reverted that change. So the command revert creates another commit, but it allows us to sort of undo something that we've done in our code. And that's, uh, that's most of what you need to know about uh, revert and reset. Uh, git log, very useful. We need to be able to do that to get the, uh, the entries. And if you're ever looking to see like where you are working with a file, so if I added a very one variable back into here like this, git diff, we can compare what we have currently in our code with what is inside the repo. And we can see here that the red means that is what is inside of the repo right now. And the green is my working copy. So to get from what's in the repo committed to what I have written right now, they would have to remove this because we added a comma. So this line has changed. We have to delete that line, add the new version of the line, and add the line that's got the variable. Okay, so that's git diff. That tells you the difference, and you can compare the files and see what the actual differences are. And then if you want to make a change, if you want to copy it from the repo over, here we are. Here's my latest one. This is the one right here. I want to fix my code. I want to go back to what was inside of the repo. Maybe there's a whole bunch of lines changed. I don't want to type them all again. We can do that git checkout. There it is, app.js, that's the file. There we go, and it's back to its regular state. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.